From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. Certainly I have used a phrase that is very adaptable for today. We have a message for this mass age and how very true it is. The more we read the news and the more we watch television, the more we realize what a mess it really is in our world. But the Lord has given us a message. Jack's going to be sharing so much with us today. But this first headline, I was surprised, and I trust that uh, you'll remember exactly where this is pointing to. Vehicles pose rising threat in fight against terrorism. Now, why in the world did he use a truck? Well, well I'm going to show you in just a moment how he had an incentive to do that. And then instability threatens terror battle. We're not really stable friends. We're going back and forth one way and another. But we need stability in this day and age, don't we? And then one last one breaks my heart. Christians soon to be hated minority. You know, we used to be the majority in many, many countries. And now it's no longer that way. But praise the Lord, we have a message for this mess age. Jack awakened me uh, this past week, and he said, the Lord showed me something, Rexella. He awakened me earlier than he actually called me. And he said, I want to share with what God gave me in my heart. And Jack, it touched my heart so much. And I trust that you'll share it with our friends. God awakened you. Folks, the Lord awakened me the other morning at 5.30. It was just this past Friday and told me we were right at the end of the age. No ifs, ands, or buts. And that I had to give it all I had for the next few years because Jesus is about to come. And you know, we are in the last hours. The Bible makes that so plain. The church teaches that there were to be 165 popes, and then there would be another pope who would come and lay out the plans for the final 113 popes for a total of close to 263 or four. The dates and everything are not that important because there were 10 popes that were really apostates. So God said, I want you to preach with all the energy you have because we are in the final hours when Father McGrair was in Rome. God showed him that after Pope 165, they'd start over again with Celestine II and call it hell number one. And when we got to number 113, that would be the Pope that rules and goes against the church. And we have him in power right now, Father Francis. He's already done 10 different things against what the church has taught for years. And I talked about that last week. I'm making a new video on it. You're going to have to get it soon. But here's what I want to say. God spoke to my heart this last Friday morning. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that every one of us may receive the things done in his body according to that which he had done, whether it be good or bad. I want to hear my Jesus say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Now, we just have so much apostasy in Christendom today. And God warns us in Ezekiel 3, beginning with verse 17, Son of man, I have made you a watchman to the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked one from his wake way to save his life. His blood will require at your hand. Yet if you warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wake, away, he shall die in his iniquity. But you have delivered your soul 
I'm going to deliver my soul from now till the day Jesus calls me home. I'm not going to compromise. I'm not going to try to be a comedian. I'm going to preach with every ounce of strength I have. And I'm not going to care if I step on toes. I'm going to preach God's word like it has to be preached in this adulterous, sinful age. Jack, I've never known you to compromise. You always say the truth as it is because he quotes the Bible. You know, that's what he has backing up everything that he says. Uh, Jack and I were watching Judge Janine the other night in an interview. She was interviewing Lieutenant General Michael Flynn and uh, he was saying how very disturbed he was, of course, with what's going on in the world. In fact, he referred to something that I gave you last year. Islamic State may have already biological, chemical weapons in Europe. He said they may have them already. And so she looked at him and she said, are you afraid? And he replied very honestly with her. He said, yes, my oh my. How good it is that we don't have to be afraid, but we need to be aware and we need to be doing something about what we know is happening. Jack, I'm going to ask you that question. Are you afraid? No, Rexella, because Jesus is coming soon and we're going to be raptured right out of this mess. Come up hither. Revelation 4.1. And we'll be gone in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. And we'll be having a lot to say about that. But the signs are here right now. And one thing talks about the terrible weapons and how people will be afraid. And it's Luke 21, beginning with verse 25. There shall be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars and distress of nations with perplexity, mass confusion. The sea and the waves were roaring. Now, men's hearts failing them for fear, for looking after those things which are coming to pass on the earth, for the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And that's through verse 28. The time has arrived, and I'm believing that because Israel is again a nation after 2,000 years is in control of Jerusalem, the two signs that had to be when Armageddon was fought, Revelation 16, 16, we are limited here in getting people saved, getting them to Christ, getting people revived, getting them on fire, and I'm going to do everything I can. God helping. Amen, Jack. I know that the Lord is certainly on him, and he's going to around the world every single week with the wonderful gospel message from the Bible. He always quotes the Bible, you know that. Well, you know, friends, we have heard our president and many others say that Islam is a religion of peace. Now, they have just finished a month-long Islamic holy season of Ramadan. I want you to see something on the screen I couldn't believe. Ramadan, a time to kill for Allah. That doesn't sound like a religion of peace, does it? And then sabotaging its miserable house. Now, Jack, perhaps you would like to read this. That is a, really quite a statement. In 1991, by a member of the board of directors of the Muslim Brotherhood in North America and later obtained by the FBI, sets forth the group's mission as a grand jihad in eliminating and destroying Western civilization from within and sabotaging its miserable house by their hands and the hands of the believers. The most audacious recent move in this great game of strategy is the offer by Al Azhar, Islam's most important university, to renew relations with the Vatican. Relations were broken off when Pope Benedict XVI denounced the bombing of a church in Alexandria, Egypt. In an overture to Pope Francis, the Grand Ayman of Al Azhar said that relations could be resumed if in one of the addresses this pope were to declare that Islam is a peaceful religion. Guess what? Islam seems to have had success. Pope Francis in his first apostolic exhortation, Evangelii Gaudium asserted 
that authentic Islam and the proper reading of the Quran are opposed to every form of violence. Baloney! Oh, Jack, absolutely. I'm going to go on and show you how very a false that statement is because uh, something that happened in Baghdad. Iraq violence, ISIS bombing kills 125 Ramadan shoppers in Baghdad. Well, there they are, just shopping. They killed 125. During their Holy Week. During their Holy Week. Now, here, I mentioned about the trucks. Here is something that they are teaching their people, the ultimate mowing machine. Now, they said that we give our readers suggestions of how to wage their individual jihad. They suggested this. And I'm sure that the gentleman must have at least read about what they are suggesting that they do. Use a truck if you must. Going on, vehicles pose rising threat in fight against terrorism. Now we know that uh, Lebanon in 1983 was also used uh, by a weapon of that uh, nature in their barracks. And then also New York, they used an airplane. That's another weapon. And the same in Oklahoma City, 1995. But now, oh my, oh my, they're using it everywhere they can get a weapon of that mass destruction going on. France, carnage, leaves dozens dead. Well, that's talking about that time of the truck. After holiday fireworks, horror strikes. You know, Jack, I can't help but say my heart goes out to the people there in France. They were celebrating in Nice, and all of a sudden, so many of them were killed. Horrible, horrible thing. Rexella, 2 Timothy 2.13, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And I want to tell you, it's not just ISIS, like President Obama says. There are 12 different murderous bunch of savages in 12 different Islamic organizations, and they're killing them by the thousands. Almost every church now in Iraq is burned to the ground and the people are gone. Many of them are here, immigrants in America. And there's no end to what's coming. I'm going to read a list to you next week that will shock you. All the places they've killed, hundreds just in them, about a dozen different cities, many of them in America. And it's not over, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, how we need to pray. Yes. Why? Because the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 5, this know also in the last day, perilous, dangerous time shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, Truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, hady, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but in works they deny him. From such turn away, and Islam's one of them from which to turn away. Oh, Lang. my, oh, my, Jack. It's so powerful. Well, we all know what uh, Turkey has been going through recently. Well, there, did you know they're a very important ally? We have an Air Force base there. Well, of course, the coup attempt shakes Turkey instability, threatens terror battle. Well, you know what? They need a stable government there for sure. And Turkey halts coup as Erdogan vows plotters will pay. The Saudi king vows iron fist for extremists. Well, he, I think he's got it. He realizes that they've ha they must have some kind of real extremity in order to control this, Jack. And you know, really, I think we all realize you can't just pacify those who are doing all of these things, Jack. We've got to really take control and stop it and do something about it. Well, the Saudi king is going to do something about it. I'm told that they have great ball games there on Saturday in that nation, but then they have beheading time, and that's Revelation 20, verse 4, I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for Jesus and his word. It's going on, and it's going to get worse. I'll tell you, there's an hour coming when it's going to be 
dangerous to live here. You know, these ISIS people have had their headquarters around Iraq and the Euphrates River. And now they're about to have them, other groups come in and take it away from them. So they're going to go all out and fight. Many are predicting they're not going to make it. But it's going to be a bloodshed like we've ever known. And it's called Armageddon, Revelation 16, 16. Are you listening? We who are believers are gone when Armageddon takes place. That's how near it all is because they're planning Armageddon, World War III. They say in Revelation 9, verses 14 to 18, Loose the four angels, the four fallen angels, the four demons, and the great river Euphrates to slay a third part of mankind. The number of the army was 200,000, 200 million. And by these three was the third part of men killed, fire, smoke, brimstone. And that's why Lieutenant General Flynn on Judge Janine program said when he was asked by her, are you afraid? He said, I'm scared to death because they are getting their chemicals, they're getting everything imaginable, they're getting their atom bombs ready. One nation already has them and they can order them all from Pakistan and one third of the world will die. And he said, even as a military man, I'm concerned. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for the coming of the Lord. Who oh, that's war. Listen, the rapture is gonna take place first and here's what happens. When this horrible war called Armageddon or World War III takes place, we're gone in the twinkling of an eye. First of all, we see in Revelation 3.10, God saying, I will keep you from, ek, out of the hour of testing which comes upon the whole world. Well, how can he keep us out of it? That's chapter 3, verse 10. I said, chapter 4, verse 1, come up. Hither. And at that Amen. command from our Lord, we sweep through billions of miles in 11 one hundredths of a second. We entered that wondrous place called heaven. Oh. Seven years later, we return to the holy city of Revelation chapters 21 and 22, and we've missed Armageddon. Now, here's what they were singing in that fifth chapter, verses 9 and 10. They sang a new song saying, Thou art worthy, Jesus, to take the book and open the seals there was. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign with you on the earth from the holy city hallelujah come quickly jesus amen come quickly jesus well the lord did tell us some of the things that would be happening just prior to his return take a quick look as if you will he said that we would see this iraqi columnist wrote this isis terror is based on islam well look what has happened here in the united states of course new york city three thousand dead going on boston marathon bombing Oh, what a horrible thing that was. And then going on, December the 2nd, San Bernardino shooting. Oh, I feel so bad. June 12th, Orlando nightclub shooting. And so many, many more things here in the United States. And they have taken credit, if you will, for what happened in Paris and in Brussels. We're responsible. They're happy for it. The jihadists claim this. Now, Jack, Jesus said, just before I come again, you're going to be seeing all these things. Is that correct? Oh, you're so right, Rexella. And you can find all those signs in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke chapter 17 and 21. And they're all here. We're going home and soon. That's why I've rededicated my life to give it all I got until that hour when he says to me, Come home, son. Oh, my. That's so exciting, isn't it, to know we're going to have good news at the end of this program. So please stay tuned, and we're going to talk more about the return of the Lord. But, oh, please do not miss getting this wonderful offer of the week. It's about Pope Francis and Christ's return. Take a look, please, at the promo. 
startling end time prophecies, Pope Francis and Christ's return is the most amazing and astonishing study Dr. Vanipi has ever prepared. It's about to happen and coincides with Christ's return. It's spine tingling, as you will discover, when listening to Catholic theologians, bishops, cardinals, and popes describing this greatest event in history. Bishop Sheen, the earliest television minister, proclaimed the message globally and stated the defector would be a cardinal of the church. Pope John Paul II paid a great price in denouncing this coming false prophet and chose 31 new cardinals, true to God's word, to attempt to keep the false prophet from coming to power. Nevertheless, Pope number 113 was elected in 2013 and took upon him the name of Saint Francis. Dr. Van Epi has studied and watched every statement Pope Francis has made to date and discovered 10 destructive errors he has promoted against his church. Saint Peter, the first pope, warned that the final leader of the church would bring forth damnable heresies, even denying the Lord Jesus. Want the answers and proof? Order startling end time prophecies. Pope Francis and Christ return. Friends, do not, please don't miss this offer. There's 800 number and there is the address, so write to me. And with a special donation, you can get Jack's wonderful book, The Final Three Popes. It is really worth having. So make the call right away. You know, we're winding this up. We're not going to have this as a permanent offer, so don't put it off. Make the call, uh, the 800 number and the address. Friends, Christians are about oh, to face a new, I will say, status in the United States and around the world. I'm so sorry for this. James Dobson of Family Talk Radio said Christians soon to be hated minority. We used to be the majority here. Veteran forcibly dragged from Air Force ceremony for mentioning God. Are you kidding? Again, government claims power to control content of sermons. When did that happen? That's in Iowa. Russia puts lid on Christians sharing faith. Of course, that's around the world. We can see what's happening with Christians. Syria rebels burn down churches, destroy Christian graves. And going on, a well-known German architect says, demolish the churches, replace them with mosques to integrate migrants. Well, you know what? They not only are saying this about Christians, but Israelis. A new status around the world. If I see an Israeli, I'll slit his throat. And then ISIS kill list, target U.S. synagogues. They've got 1,700 targets right now in the United States. Next war with Hamas. Inevitable must be Israel's last top defense official says. I'm going to go to Jack. The Christians and the Israelis are certainly hated. And I trust that today you'll be praying for the Christians and the Israelis around the world. Jack, it's so serious. Oh, Rexella, I tell you. Matthew 24, beginning with verse 5, right through uh, the things about Israel. Tell us that Armageddon is here. World War III is about to happen. He says, here are the signs. Many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of the sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Then shall many be offended and shall betray one another, shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure to the end shall be saved. That's the end of the tribulation hour for the unsaved. Now get it. It's all over Israel. What shall be the sign of your coming, Jesus? Matthew 24. And he said, the fig tree is Israel. Mm, right. And I can prove that through Joel 1, 7, Hosea 9, 10. And when you see the fig tree blossoming and becoming a nation again, that's it. What? Why? Because there was no Israel after 70 AD when the Romans took the Jews away. And they never came back again till 1948. Now, 
They're there, our generation. And the war is fought over Jerusalem and Israel. Ezekiel 38, verses 8, 14, 16, 17, 18, 19, chapter 39, verses 2, 4, twice, and 7, 9, 11, 12, 17, 22, 23, 25, 29. 18 times! That's right to go. There was no Israel to go after and no Jerusalem to win. Today, it's here. Oh, Jack. Judge Janine asked this question, are you afraid? Are you afraid? Jesus said all this would happen. But he said, let not your hearts be what? Troubled. Neither let it be afraid. You don't have to be afraid if you're ready for the coming of the Lord. He's coming so soon. Will you ask him to be your savior? Come into your heart. I guarantee you'll have peace in a troubled world. Jack, pray this prayer with Jack about accepting Christ. Or is your heart heavy? Jesus, come unto me. All you are heavy laden, burdened, I'll give you peace. He died on the cross for you. Now, all he wants you to do is John 1, 12, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons and daughters of God. Wow. Jesus, thank you. I receive you. I receive the work of the cross. I receive your precious, holy, shed blood to wash away my sin. I receive you now, Jesus. Come into my heart and save me. Amen. Amen. You know, Jesus said, I am the way. No one comes to the Father but by me. You just receive Christ and you're ready for heaven. How wonderful. Please write to me. There's my address. I'll send you this little booklet. First steps in a new direction. I want to hear from you, my brother and sister in the Lord. And now, whoa, I don't want you to miss. We're winding up this wonderful offer about Pope Francis and Christ's return. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella, my friend, to order startling end time prophecies, Pope Francis and Christ's return. Have your credit card ready and call toll free. 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rex Ella. Thank you so very much, Chuck. And I want to say that with a special donation, you can receive Jack's wonderful book, The Final Three Popes. So don't put it off. There's a number to call and write to us. I'll get it in the mail as soon as I hear from you. I want to leave you with this wonderful thought. Troubles seem smaller when you remember the greatness of God. We'll look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very much. Bye-bye.